Hi there, Art Nergard here from Shooting Site. I'm here to create a brief video today about the installation of the Beretta BRX100 trigger. Uh, specifically, how to tear down the lower, remove the Beretta OEM trigger, and how to replace it with my prototype trigger. Now, this is going to be a quick and dirty video because these are just prototype triggers. I expect that by the time I have something in the market, there will be slight changes, so there will be parts of this video that are not relevant to the final production model. But this is here to serve just as an aid to those people who are the early testers who are going to be trying it out. I would like to put in one caution here. This video is intended to help out somebody who is competent to install and verify that a trigger is working properly. It is not intended to be full instruction for somebody who's never done this before, or who doesn't have a mechanical aptitude, or is just uncomfortable playing with a trigger in a rifle. This is a, an essential element of the fire control mechanism. Having a trigger malfunction can have serious or even lethal consequences, so you want to make sure it's done right. If you are not competent or not comfortable doing this, please have it done by a gunsmith. Let's start by looking at quickly what I'm going to include in the kit that you're getting. You've got a hammer, you've got three plastic bushings. Two are the same length, those are for the hammer. One is shorter, that's for the trigger. There's the actual trigger. There's three installation tools. One is a stub pin used to align parts to get them in. Here's a little metal tube that's hollow. That's used for grabbing the, the ends of the spring legs so you can manipulate them uh, when they're too short to grab. And there's a headed pin here which is useful for uh, installation. What you're going to supply is a small hammer. Uh, I'm sorry, one more piece. You get a trigger spring. You need a small pin punch, like a 330 seconds punch. Do not use a center punch which tapers. You want to use a pin punch which is cylindrical. I then have a little screwdriver blade. What I've actually done is I've taken a, an old screwdriver that was boogered up and used a Dremel and just ground a little notch in the tip of it. That is so that you can reach in and grab uh, the legs of springs and move them around without them popping off the end. Another easy way to do that is a little Torx bit, T-O-R-X. You can see these Torx bits. I've got little scallops machined in the tip of them. Again, that's nice for grabbing a spring so it sort of sits in a scallop and doesn't pop off. You'll want two blocks of something just so that you can uh, drive a pin through the receiver and have it pop out the other side. I'm just using two uh, steel blocks. Um, and of course, there's your receiver. So, let's get started on pulling it apart. Okay, first thing you're going to do, hammer forward. We'll start by taking out the drop safety, which is this top pin here. Um, again, we'll just lay that across these two blocks. The headed pin works great for driving. We'll just lay that on there, and it just takes light taps with a hammer. These are just uh, metal pins into plastic pieces, so nothing should take a lot of force to uh, withdraw. If there is a big force needed, you're doing something wrong. Uh, pull out the pin. The drop safety just lifts out, so we'll set that to the side. Also, what came out is the drop safety pin. We'll set that to the side. Next thing, we're going to we're going to take out the safety. Right in there, there's a little roll pin over on the right side of the rifle as you're facing forward. Um, we're going to drive that out with the pin punch. Easiest way I've found is just lay that up against the table. You can hold the the receiver in place by leaning on it. Take your pin punch, put it on your little roll pin, and drive it out. There we go. So the, the pin just dropped into the, the receiver, so we're just going to dump that out. There it is. Set it to the side. Don't lose it. Now, we can pull out the right side, and again, I'm, I'm referring left and right as the operator, as if you're shooting the rifle. So, right there is as if you're shooting the rifle, right side is on the right. We'll take out the right side safety, set that to the side. Before we take out the left side, be aware that underneath the detent are, um, there's two detents with a spring in there that'll pop out. So before you take it out, I'll take it out by putting my finger in from the right side, but I'll cover the left side with my hand. So when I pop it out, there you can see what's inside of there. So it's two detents and a spring. Uh, I just don't want to lose them. Set all that to the side. Next, we're going to pop out the hammer. Again, we'll just lay it between the two blocks. Use the headed pin. Lay it on there. They're under a little bit of spring tension, but it's not huge. So 
So you can see now, the hammer pin has dropped out. We're going to put that to the side. Pull out the headed pin. The hammer and two springs will fall out. Finally, we're going to take out the trigger. That's this last pin on the bottom. Again, use the headed pin as a driver. Trigger pin fell out. We'll set that to the side. Pull out the headed pin. And we drop out our trigger and a trigger spring. Now, trigger and a trigger spring we're not going to use again, so we can set them to the side. Hammer. What we're going to do is we're going to recover this one little pin that's got two notches cut in it. Um, again, they're just sort of pressed into the plastic. Sometimes you need a little bit of help driving them out. Sometimes they'll slide out loose. Um, but again, I'll use my little 332nd pin punch, and it should just take a couple of taps. There we go. Okay. Hammer, you can set to the side. We're not going to use that again. This little pin we're going to use. Now, um, before we start putting my parts in, first thing we're going to do, we'll take the trigger. We'll take one of the two smaller pins. The, the uh, drop safety pin and the trigger pin are identical, so you can use either one. We'll just slip the pin through and just assure that it's spinning freely and there's no binding or anything. If there is, uh, maybe a Dremel with a little stone. If there's a burr, I, I've checked all these triggers. There shouldn't be any burrs inside. Or a little bit of fine sandpaper and polish up your pin if you've got a burr on the pin. But you want to make sure that slides freely. Um, so next thing we'll do is we take the lower receiver. We'll take the headed pin. I stick the headed pin in the trigger pinhole from the right side. I will take the shorter of the two spacers and I'll just put that over the pin thusly. Um, next thing I'll do is I will take the trigger spring. I'll position it so the two legs are forward and the loop is up and I'll slip that in there and then slip the pin through the entire, the headed pin through the entire assembly. So now you can see we have the headed pin going all the way through the trigger pin and the spacer. Next thing we'll do is we'll take the trigger pin and we'll slide it in from the left, gradually pushing the headed pin out until we can see the gap between the two pins inside the spring. Now we're going to pull both pins out a little bit so that the headed pin is holding the spring from the right side and the trigger pin is holding the, sp the spring from the left side but the gap between the spring coils is open. In that position, just sort of lean against the receiver to hold it against the table, we'll take the trigger. Now the trigger's got a rubber coating on it. The rubber coating is slightly thicker than the body so it's easier to get the spring to engage by sliding across the steel than to try and have it come up from the bottom. But you'll just have to jiggle it around. So it, it goes inside. It's going to fit in that little gap in the spring, and we're just going to slide it in there. I'm going to take a little bit of pressure. And once it's in, we're going to push in the headed pin to engage in the trigger pivot hole. From there, we can gradually push the trigger pin in from the opposite side. You might have to wiggle the trigger around a little bit to get the pin to sort of find the hole. There we go. It just popped in. Um, now it takes almost nothing to, to just put it all the way through. Again, just before it exits the other side, just make sure that the make sure that the pinhole is properly lined up before pushing it all the way through. So there you go. The uh, and the pin should end up flush on both sides of the receiver. Uh, check on the inside that your trigger moves freely, and that right there is the most difficult part of the installation. Next, we're going to put in the hammer. So for the hammer, what we'll do is we'll take the hammer. We'll take that little tiny pin we recovered from the other hammer, the one that has the two notches on the, on the two ends. We'll put that into the hammer. That should be, might not be a slip fit, but it shouldn't take a whole lot of force to get it in there. If you have to tap it once or twice, uh, that's fine. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the small stub pin that I supplied as part of the installation kit. We're going to put that through the hammer. We'll take the two spacers. We put one on the left side, one on the right side. Then we're going to put the hammer springs on. Now, the hammer springs are left hand and right hand. They're different. Um, they go on with the, you can see they have a short leg and a long leg. 
the short leg goes against the hammer body. Ultimately, when they're installed in the rifle, you want them oriented with that short leg behind that pin so that as you push down on here, it pushes the hammer forward. We're going to install them with that leg in front of the pin just so they go in without spring tension. It'll make installation a lot easier. So left and right. Um, and now this is going to drop into the receiver. Now, just before we drop it in, in the receiver, if you look down inside the trigger, you can see there's a little ledge that the trigger spring legs are resting on right there. And there's a wall in front of them. And then there's a couple of holes in front of that wall. We want the hammer spring legs to touch the back of this wall. We do not want them to go into that little hole there. So they'll just take some, a little bit of uh, futzing around. There we go. We want the hammer spring leg there and there. Um, it'll take some futzing around to get them in the right place. It's not that difficult, but uh, just so you know where they're going to go. So we'll take our hammer assembly now. This entire thing slips in just forward of the two bolt stop legs there. So we just slip that in just like that. And it'll just drop right down. And then that retention pin I gave you will keep everything nicely lined up. Now, again, if we take our little screwdriver with a notch cut out of it or the Torx wrench or whatever, um, we can reach in the front here and we can sort of, we got to get the light right, so I'm not going to try and film it manipulate those uh, hammer springs until those legs are where we want them. It's, there we go. They, they go in pretty easily. It's not that difficult. Next thing you're going to do is push down on the hammer until you see the hammer pin line up with the hole in the receiver, the stub pin. From there, grab your headed pin, push it in, and just push it all the way through. There you go. As you push it in, you'll see the stub pin come out the other side. Take my hammer pin, push this, the headed pin back out, and again, this will just bring everything. There we go. So my pin's all the way through, my hammer's in place. Now, uh, okay, now we've got to get, well, that slipped out of there. We've got to get those springs, the spring legs, wound back so they engage behind that shoulder pin. The way we're going to do that is you reach, you reach with a screwdriver from in front of the bolt stop, you reach under and you can just sort of grab and just barely start to lift that spring leg up a little bit. At that point, you take this handy tube that I gave you and you reach in behind the stop and you slip it over the top of the spring leg. Like so. Now, you can see that tube is over the spring leg. Now it becomes real easy to grab the top of this tube and just sort of bring that spring leg back. And you can see I've just rested that uh, tube against the back side of that spring. Now you just sort of twist and slide the spring upwards, the pin. You just sort of twist and slide the tube upwards, sorry. And the spring leg just drops right in there for you. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go. And I'll just bring it back. And bring it around that pin and again the pins trying to slide out of the way but there we go so now I've got both my hammer spring legs engaged in the back side of that pin and we're done you can now see the hammer functions boom that's the toughest part now we're just gonna put the safety back in uh, to put the safety back in first thing the hammer's got to be cocked We'll take our safety. Here's our safety. We'll put our little spring and detent assembly back in with this hole in the back here. There we go. This goes in. The easiest way to put it in is with the one facing straight up, so in a fire position. You'll see the little detent sticking out there, and you can sort of use your fingernails and just sort of push them down in a little bit. 
and they'll they'll pop into to, uh, where you need them to be. The flip side of the safety goes in from the other side. You drop your pin. From here, it's easier to bring the hammer forward. Slide your pin into the hole in the in the safety. Again, you can use a hammer to drive it in there. Okay, final step is put in your drop safety. Uh, easiest to cock the hammer before doing that. On your drop safety, this little tail that sticks down needs to go in in front of, there's a little lobe that sticks up in the bottom of the receiver. Easiest thing to do, slide it in to make sure that lobe is positioned correctly. I'm sorry, before you do, put on your safety rocket forward and slide your, your takedown latch forward and then release the safety. That'll hold it down out of the way. You slide down your drop safety, put your headed pin in, come in from the other side and displace the headed pin. Again, you might need a couple of taps of the hammer, but it shouldn't be anything dramatic to get that lined up. Okay, now that the drop safety is in, you're finished with installation. The last thing to do is to verify that the trigger is working correctly. So the first thing to check is with the safety in the one position, so it's a fire condition, you can cock the hammer. When you pull the trigger, you pull and you feel a solid second stage. And when you pull a little bit further with not very much travel, the hammer drops. Next thing to do is check that in the cock condition. When you apply the safety and you pull the trigger, the hammer does not drop. Next thing to check is when you remove the safety, the hammer does not drop just because you previously pulled the trigger and then disengaged the safety. By the way, I recommend when you're test firing, try and avoid dropping the hammer on just the base plastic receiver without it being installed in the rifle. I've not heard of any damage being reported, but I wouldn't want to risk potentially cracking the plastic because uh, it's not meant to take the impact of the hammer. Um, next thing to check, uh, in the fire position, with the trigger held back, cock the hammer. Now, in this condition, the hammer will be grabbed by the disconnector. Now, when you release the trigger, you should hear a solid click as the trigger resets and the hammer pops up just slightly. Um, following that, obviously, it should fire normally. Next thing to check, with the hammer cocked, does the drop safety work correctly? So what we're going to do, first the drop safety should be pivoting freely and you should feel spring pressure pushing it back out. When you push it in and you pull the trigger, the gun should not fire. When you release it, the gun should not fire. And now that it has been released, if you pull the trigger, it should fire normally. With all of those checks in place, the lower is ready to put back in the rifle and proceed to live firing. Do be aware this is still a prototype trigger. Basic safety testing has been done on it, but not a full complement. So be aware when you use it the potential risks of doubling or other unintended functioning of the trigger. Uh, please document any strange behavior you see. Please make sure you only load the rifle and only point it in a direction where if the trigger does malfunction, you know where the round will impact, you know what your target is, you know what's beyond, and you limit the potential for any damage due to triggers not behaving properly. Thank you very much.